Hello everyone. Today let's talk about the future of education with mobile learning. Many, many people have asked me, what's education going to look like with mobile learning? So let's, let's explore that today. My name is Muhammad Ali and I'm a professor at Athabasca University in Canada. So we will look at the future of education with mobile learning. And it's very important you as a teacher to think about what's your role going to be in the future in terms of in a mobile world where we have mobile learning and education. So as you look at the information, as you listen to the information, think about your role as a teacher in the evolving nature of education in a mobile, learn, in a mobile world. There are over 5 billion mobile devices in the world. How is it going to affect education? How is it going to affect your role? So it's something that you need to think about. Here's some trend uh, in the future in terms of mobile learning, mobile technology, etc. We are seeing the technology emerging. It's going virtual, it's going non-physical. And we don't know what's going to technology is going to be like in five, five, ten years. Maybe the technology we have today will not exist in five to ten years. So we have to think about what the technology is going to look like and how we can plan education to deliver on that technology. Another trend is immediate assembly of course materials, learning materials. We have many, many repositories today, databases of education materials. So in the future, students, if they have a learning outcome, they will type in the learning outcome and the system will assemble all of the learning resources for the student. So it's immediate assembly of learning materials. So rather than the student receiving a list of resources, they can actually get their own resource to achieve learning outcomes in a course. We will have user-generated content where the users will work in group, the students, to generate their own content. And they will give experts, teachers, to validate the content. So, example, uh, Wikipedia, where students come together and they generate information, share information. We will have intelligent agent, agent to adapt the interface to the learner. So the system will actually look at the learner as the learner completes some lessons, mobile learning lessons. It will detect the learning style of the learner and it will actually adapt the interface. So if the learner is visual, it's going to give them a visual interface. If learners are textual, it's going to give them a textual interface. So there's some intelligent in the, in the system. In the future, we will have intelligent learning materials where the intelligence will be built in the learning materials. So if students are having problems, it will actually give students remedial instruction. So we're talking about intelligent content, intelligent learning materials. We are seeing major, major shift towards open education resources where students can access courses for free under Creative Commons license, where teachers can access open education resources and use it in their courses. They can adapt it based on uh, agreement with the different websites, databases. There will be less use of textual materials, more multimedia. And some people are predicting that everything in the future will be multimedia because if you look at the generation of students today, they tend not to read text. They tend to look at video, look at graphics, uh, talk, use audio, etc. So we'll see more use of multimedia. We will have emotional computing where this, the system, the device will detect the emotion of the students. And based on the emotion of the student, will prescribe the appropriate learning materials, easy, difficult, or no materials. And then we're looking at gesture-based interaction where the student will actually interact with the device by pointing or by looking, etc., by using gestures. So those are some of the trends that I see that are coming in terms of mobile technology that's affecting education. I mentioned open education resources, and I would like to define what I mean by open education resources. And there are two very good definitions by the William and Fleur Hewlett Foundation. So OERs, Open Education Resources, are teaching, learning, and research resources that reside in the public domain, that's key public domain, and has been released under an intellectual property license that permits their free use, 
free use or repurposing by others. So it's public domain, free use or repurposing. Open education resources include full courses, course materials, modules, textbooks, streaming videos, tests, software, or any other tools, materials, or techniques used to support access to knowledge. So any resources that are out there that support learning are considered as open education resources. And so OER, learning materials that are freely available for use, remixing, and redistribution. So those are some of the excellent definitions that I saw in terms of open education resources, which is a major trend for education for the future. So what are the benefits of open education resources? Of course, the low cost to learners. If it's available free for learners, then they can download it and they can use it for free. Or if they have to pay a small fee, they can afford it. It can be accessed by anyone because it's affordable, which is social justice. There is resources for everyone to share, open education resources for learning. And from a teacher point of view, uh, administrator point of view, prevents duplication of effort. So for example, if a course is available as open education resources by one teacher, teach other teachers who are teaching the same course, involved in the same course, they don't have to recreate that course, redevelop that course. They can use the existing open course for their, their courses. So it prevents duplication and it actually reduces costs of education. And I will present one example of an open access resources and gives you an idea if you have open education resources available, people will access the resources. They will use it as long as they know about it. And so here's one example and it's, the example is a book that I published in, as an open education book. And it's the book on mobile learning, transforming the delivery of education and training. And that's the URL. Anyone can go to that URL and they can download the entire book for free and use it for education purposes. So that's one example of an open access resource. <laughs> and as I mentioned, once you have your resources available as open access where people can actually download it for education, they will actually use it. And this, in the United States, there were over 13,000 downloads. In Canada, four th over 4,000. India, just below 4,000 downloads. So many, many countries download the, the book for use in their courses or for personal development or for research. South Africa, there were 497 downloads. <clears throat> In Thailand, 285 downloads. Nigeria, 151. Kenya, 143. And as you can see, people from developed and developing countries are downloading the, the resources for free. So once you have it available, people will actually download the resources. And in terms of the summary statistics, uh, there were over three years, there were about 61,000 downloads. In 63 different countries, and at the same time, 700 cop printed copies were sold. So it seems as if the download of the free resources does not affect the sale of the printed copies. So if you have your courses, your books, your materials available as open resources, then people will download it. They will use it, especially people in development countries, because they can't afford to buy expensive textbooks, expensive resources, etc. In the future of education should also look at the new generation of learners. We have to make sure we cater for the new generation of learners because if we use the same way as we deliver classroom instruction, the teacher presenting to the students where they have to sit passively to receive the information, we may have high dropout rate and students not motivated. Some of the characteristics of the new generation of learners, because of technology, they have high online presence. They're on, always online. And so, especially using mobile devices, they use the mobile technology to interact with each other, use social media, etc. They're in our generation. If they want to find information, they will use a search engine. 
to find information right away rather than wait to ask the educator or the librarian. So they want everything now. They want the results for the test now. They're the virtual generation. They can do things virtually. They can communicate with each other even though they're in, in close proximity in, in next door to each other. So they're very, very comfortable communicating with each other using technology. They have high expertise in social networking because they use the mobile devices to network with each other, to use social media. They play games on their techno mobile devices. So as teachers, educators, we have to make sure that whatever we develop for our courses, our lessons is game-like, has a lot of interactivity. The young generation are digital experts. Uh, if you give them a piece of technology, they will figure it out right away. They wouldn't even look at the manual. They will just figure out how to use it. So we call them digital experts. They adapt to technology very, very quickly. So if they get a new piece of technology, they will start using it right away. And they adapt to it, and they will actually make good use of it. And technology is second nature. It's part of them. So they are very, very comfortable using technology. So as teachers, educators, we have to make sure when we design our courses, we have to cater for the new generation of learners, or else we will lose them. Here are some recommendations for reinventing education for the future. <clears throat> we need to develop a smart system to cater for the needs of the learners. <clears throat> the computers today, with the software, you can build intelligence where the system will detect the needs of the learner, the learning style, etc., and it will cater the learning materials for the different students. <clears throat> so we need to develop smart systems to cater for the individual student needs. <clears throat> we need to encourage creativity rather than just present information to students using technology or the teacher present information. We need to empower the student to use that information to be creative, to invent stuff, to apply it in real life, etc. So we need to encourage creativity. Because of information, it's changing at a very, very fast rate. We need to educate as needed rather than in case it is needed. Because what a student learned today may be obsolete next week because of changes of information. So we should actually teach students how to find information, how to research current information when they need it. And we need to make the shift from the acquisition of information to knowledge creation to the development of wisdom. So knowledge is, you, people gain knowledge when they apply information, when they make it part of them. We need to go beyond that. We need to make sure students develop wisdom. And wisdom is the application of knowledge. It becomes, when knowledge becomes part of a person, it becomes wisdom. So in the future, we need to make sure we have, we develop wisdom. So we have the knowledge age right now. We're going to be moving to the wisdom age. And we need to make sure we educate our students so that they can function in the 21st century, in the 21st century world, world which, uh, which are demanding different skills. And I did a study in 2010 where I had students, employers, teachers in a room and I says, what are the skills that students need to function in the 21st century? And some of the major categories include communication. They have to be able to communicate with technology and mobile learning provides them that skill, expertise. They have to be able to do continuous improvement so that they improve themselves, they gain current knowledge, etc. And again, the technology allow them to do research, to find information. They have to be good problem solvers. So as teachers, we need to use problem-based learning. Move away from information dissemination to student. Give student a problem. Let the student do the research on how to solve the problem. And that's how they learn. As they come up with the solution, they will get the knowledge and information to solve problems. So we need to sh make the shift to problem-based learning. They will, 21st century, they need to, need to use information communication technology. If they take courses on mobile technology, they will be very comfortable using the communication technology. 
They have to develop teamwork in a virtual environment because of globalization. With social media, their uh, students are actually doing that using technology. Globalization, they have to connect with different students around the world so that they can share culture, share expertise. And again, with the technology, they can do that. Same with doing research and develop critical thinking skills when they do research. So when you design your courses in the future for mobile learning, e-learning, make sure you provide these uh, 21st century skills for students so that they can function in the 21st century. So access to open education resources using mobile and ubiquitous technologies will revolutionize education and change the world. And I strongly believe that teachers and educators have a major role to play in terms of revolutionize education and change the world. Thank you very much.